Hello, Lacey. We are live. Hi, Chang. So Hi. happy to be here with you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I am awesome. Yeah. I uh, just got back from a little weekend vacation at the beach, so I oh. feel really, really refreshed. Oh, that's nice. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, it's been a hot like several days, isn't it? Yes. 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 Anyway, so thank you so much. It's been a, a a long time. I always wanted to chat with you and uh, to pick your little brain. You're so smart and you're so on the front and you're so inspirational. So um, yeah, you're welcome. And um, all right, so I'm going to introduce you to our audience first just to read a very short uh, biography of you. Um, Lacey DeLang is an... Um, advocate for humanistic values and rethinking the way we do life. She wants to see a society that better accommodates our human needs. Lacey is the executive producer and co-host of the Rethinking Humanity podcast, debuting in April 2020. She worked as an advanced team lead on Andrew Yen's 2020 presidential campaign closely with Andrew and the support team traveling with them on the campaign trail. She founded Atlantic, Atlanta Young Gen in March 2019 and currently resides in Old Fourth Ward, Atlanta. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, Thank you. That was yeah. wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> you can see Lazy's uh, social uh, social media uh, uh, handles in the description below. So check her out. So yeah. So tell me a little bit um, what's going on right now. Uh, you have a couple of uh, project going on. One is uh, the podcast. Yes. Should we, should we talk about like how did this whole podcast mm. was born? Yeah, last, last it's, a great, it's yeah. a great story. Well, first of all, it would not have happened if it wasn't for the pandemic, which I'm sure there are a lot of people who have stories like that, which I think is a super interesting story, by the way. Um, but the fact that the pandemic happened, we all had to slow down. Um, obviously, that created an opportunity for us to have some more time. The other piece of this, which makes this a good story, and we do have a whole episode about the origin story of the podcast, um, which you guys can listen to if you're interested. But really, a lot of it has to do with Victor Ho, who you've had on your show previously. He's our technical director. And that guy basically tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> he, Victor! <laughs> I know. <laughs> he yeah. tricked me into starting it um, yeah. by basically starting his own and then inviting me as the first guest. And then, yeah. why don't you be the co-host with me, Lacey? And I'm like, okay, whatever. And then, so anyways, before we knew it, he's like, if you want to do a podcast, I'll do all your technical stuff for you. And I'm like, yeah. what do I have to lose? And what else do I have going on, you right. know? Right. So I knew uh, what I would do it about, what topic it would be about. I knew it would be a topic that would overlap very strongly with the themes of Andrew Yang's presidential campaign, his platform. Um, and that was something I was highly, this topic was something I was highly interested in previous to finding out about Andrew, which was why I got so involved in his presidential campaign. Yeah. Yeah. So um, now, what is the difference between um, having a podcast and also you have a YouTube channel? J does all these things simultaneously going at the same time or you will upload your your things to YouTube? It's a good question. Uh, thank you for asking that, honestly, because uh, we're, we want to build our YouTube following. So if you're out there and you've listened to us on our podcast, we'd love to invite you to follow us on YouTube. Um, so how that's working is we have a couple of episodes from the first season um, that are uploaded to YouTube, but we have focused mainly for most of the time on the audio portion. And we decided after the one year anniversary episode, we were going to do all of our episodes live on YouTube, as well as dropping them down on the audio to the podcast. So basically we have a video version and an audio version 
available. Um, if you go to our website, which Chang, you just so wonderfully and kindly <laughs> popped up here on the screen, <laughs> reasonhumanity.us, all the links to our most recent episodes are actually to YouTube. So you can see the video element, but we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, we're on most of your major platforms. And you know what's funny, Ching? I don't know if you do your uh, YouTube channel here in audio form as well, but sometimes I find that like one, some days I really like watching it on video and some days I really just like the audio version better, like the podcast version better. And I think it depends on what people like, but we wanted to expand our audience a little bit further than just the audio portion. And so that's kind of um, why we decided to, to expand into the, the YouTube space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wonderful. I checked mm -hmm. you out. Uh, 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 you have quite a lot of uh, episode now. Is it a, like a, this, uh, the newest episode is what, number 33? Like, tell us a little bit. Yes, number 33, it's our need for identity. So uh -huh. we are actually working through um, the philosopher slash psychoanalyst Eric Fromm's writings right now on um, it, from it, his writings on the sane society is, is the name of the book. Um, but basically he's breaking down um, what d the question, do we have human needs? How do mm -hmm. we create a society that creates uh, and enables us to live in a healthy way? And part of how we do that is understanding who we are as human beings. And the argument is, is that we've gotten so far away from accommodating our humanity and our human needs with our socioeconomic structure that we are actually getting lost in the process. Again, very similar to what Andrew Yang, you know, message was as he was running for president. And so um, that's really the focus of our conversations right now. And we're kind of dissecting what he's saying about what our needs are. You know, in order to be able to know how to, we can flourish, we have to know what our needs are. I mean, we, we actually, pro, you know, proposed this in a past episode. If you were going to have adopt a, you know, bunch of monkeys or any animal, you would need to know what that animal needed in order to live well, right? Mm -hmm. and so if not, you can't expect them to live well. So what do we need as human beings to live well? And we argue and he argues that what we're doing right now, the way we're doing society right now does not accommodate mm. our human needs very well at all. Mm. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah, very good. So um, I wanted to show our audience um, just a little uh, bits of uh, how your um, podcast look like. Uh, okay. So I, I can do um, screen share. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Um, so here we go. So let's see. This one uh, is thirty-two. Okay. okay. So we'll just we'll just play a little bit, a, a minute or two. So cool. this one's episode number number thirty-two. Awesome. Welcome to the Rethinking Humanity podcast, where we dive deeper into what makes us human and what causes us to thrive. I'm Lacey Delane. Hi, I'm Sonia Lorea. And we are so excited to have you guys for episode 32. Woohoo! <laughs> it wow. is the, the need for rootedness. Uh, we've been taught we've been in a series talking about. Uh, the human needs that we we all have, and, and many folks debate whether we have human needs. Um, I think that's kind of silly. Uh, we definitely do have human needs, and this is one of them. Sonia, what's going on, girl? How are you? I'm just ready to do the podcast today. Lots of interesting topics we're going to touch on. So just yeah. waiting, waiting to do this. For sure. Well, um, I have to tell you guys that I'm feeling kind of crummy today. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what it is. Like Sonia, we Sonia and I met for breakfast, and I'm just like, my brain is just slow moving this morning. Um, but I did get my second vaccination, a second shot. <laughs> <laughs> second <laughs> vaccination. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Sonia, I think um, you said. Going to. All right. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you for playing a little bit. Yeah. Sure. Whoops. <laughs> at the beginning and yeah. where we and then we we like to also talk about 
like recent news stories that have come out that mm -hmm. are just evidence that we are really neglecting our humanity and our human needs by the way things are right now. And so that's one of the fun things that we like to do. And then we just, you know, kind of get into the content, but it's very casual, very conversational. Oh. Um, you know, it's not a bunch of prepackaged things that we put together, you know, it's live and then one, one and done is how we do it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, young and Peter is here. Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, now, so I, I also, I also noticed you from the very first one uh, you did to now you're getting so much comfortable in front of the screen. Right. So, yes. yeah. So um, uh, can you talk about this whole experience of having this podcast? Mm. Do you, do you think like uh, other than, because mm. you discuss about issues that you want people to know and you want to, you want to discuss about, but then by just having such show, do you find yourself like you, you gain from the whole experience yourself? So much, so much. I mean, I think this has very much been a challenging personal journey for me. Um, I, wouldn't have ever started my own podcast nor really put myself out there like this. And being someone who likes to be very self-aware or strives to be very self-aware, I'm learning that part of that, the reasoning for that is just, I, I don't think that I learned in childhood certain things about how important and okay it is to advocate for yourself, to, use your voice, right? I think I learned the opposite in certain situations. And so for me, this has been a very liberating, but also challenging at times. And, you know, it's so funny because I'll tell Sonia, I'll be like, oh my gosh, I was so nervous. And she goes, I couldn't even tell. You know? <laughs> but, but putting myself out there in a public way is definitely something that in the past I've associated with selfishness or egotism and things like that. And what I found is some liberation around that and actually realizing, you know what, this is empowering to me. It's empowering to other people. Um, the more vulnerable I am, the more I feel like people can relate. And then hopefully that is encouraging to them too. So yeah, I mean, it's really Victor gets a lot of credit because I would not have done this. I would not have done this. And part of my process of growth personally uh, that was surprising and difficult about Andrew's run for president was my being related to him and then Twitter, my Twitter followers growing and him responding and reacting to me on Twitter. And I was like, where did all this come from? Do I really want, <laughs> you know, to be, to be known like this? And <laughs> You know, I, what I said to myself was at the end of the day, if it helps people, if it helps the cause, then I'm willing to do it. Um, but I've never been the kind of person who like felt comfortable kind of doing this. And so I'm starting to feel more comfortable. And I appreciate you noticing that. It's true. Like we, Sonia too, like we both are just much more comfortable getting better at, at what we do. And so it's been an amazing journey. Um, I, I can't like I can't express enough how thankful I am that we we decided to do it. That's great. Yeah. Um. Can you tell? I always like to find out my guests like what what's their upbringing like. Can you tell me like where were you born and what's your mm -hmm. childhood like? And um, you know, like I always feel like I, I like to know their childhood and then kind of have a make a sense of what, what kind of person they're eventually becoming. Yeah. So I grew up uh, actually in the suburbs of Atlanta, on the west side of Atlanta, well, of Georgia, uh, in Douglasville. So I'm a suburbs girl. Um, my family, I have an older brother and um, was really close with him growing up and started out uh, actually playing softball for a little while. And then I got scared of the ball at some point. Not sure. <laughs> and I also had a coach that yelled all the time was not cool with that. <laughs> I didn't like to be able to. So I ended up stopping playing softball and we moved whenever I was in first or second grade. So when, when we moved, I met a new neighbor who invited me to go play soccer with her. 
and I fell in love with soccer. I've been an active soccer player from that point on, played competitive soccer all through high school um, and from third grade on. I can visualize you. Yeah? I, yeah, yeah. Like you're running in the field, you know, with very determination. I, I can visualize you. <laughs> it's so much fun. It's one of my favorite things to do. It just makes me happy, you know? <laughs> and what's really cool about soccer is it's such a global sport. Mm -hmm. And when I lived in Guatemala, I was able to connect with so many people from while I was playing soccer, we played pickup soccer and there was people from Israel and England and all over the place that I played with. And so it's this, it really is a very cool globalized connecting point. Um, you know, so um, soccer was a big part of my childhood um, school as well. And then I ended up going to Queens University of Charlotte in North Carolina um, and studying uh, elementary ed and journalism. So yeah, I've been, I've done a little bit of public relations and a little bit of journalism stuff and I really enjoyed it. Um, <clears throat> but I really, really love working with kids. And so that's really where most of my career time has been spent. Wow. That's yeah. wonderful. That's yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So um, now how did you ever get interested in Andrew Yen's work and being involved in his uh work yeah so man <clears throat> there's so much to this story and i take that deep breath because i'm reflecting <laughs> on there was some pain involved there was some you know motivation and happiness but ultimately it boils down to i was dating a guy who was here in the u.s on an h-1b visa and that's a highly skilled worker visa and this was in 2018, I believe. Yes. Um, and he ended up having to leave the country because some of some law changes under the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. And this is a guy who works for He's a highly skilled worker. He, you know, his visa is normally just automatically renewed. And so he's been here. He had been here for like eight or 10 years. And because of this law change that was quite unexpected, he ended up having to leave the country. So I was involved in a relationship with him. And I realized from that pain that things were not cool politically with how we were doing things, how we we're treating our immigrants. And I was like, I know that, I don't know that I can make a huge difference, but I know I can feel good that I'm doing something to help make a change if I do something. And so that was really the, the thing that spurred me to be willing to act. And he actually was very involved in reading and learning about politics. And I found out about Bernie Sanders from him. And um, so when Bernie Sanders and the, the whole presidential thing was happening, I was like, let's go, Bernie. Like, I, I wanted Bernie to announce. I wanted Bernie to run. And then I saw I actually was watching the Young Turks quite often for a little while. And I saw Andrew on the Young Turks in November of 2018. And they got, he was, of course, talking about basic income. And I was like, wow, that's such an interesting idea. Like, that seems so progressive to me. Yes. And so I followed him on Twitter. And then when the Joe Rogan interview happened, of course, that blew up. And I listened to it. I listened to the first half of it because it's like a three hour interview. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I had to take a break. And if it wasn't for the fact that I listened to the second half and yeah. I'm coming back to it, I don't know that I would be having this conversation with you right now. <laughs> uh, because the second half of the interview, I was like, this guy gets it, man. He gets it. He gets it. And I'm like, because at first I was like, okay, well, let's just see if Bernie will pick up, you know, basic income. And then I realized, no, he has so much more experience and understanding of what's really happening with people, you know? And then I said, all right, I think this is my guy for president, but I'm going to get his book first before I like pull the trigger. So I ordered his book. Um, actually, I listened to it on Audible. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was Audible, but I listened to the audio version. Yeah, mm -hmm. And it's cool because he reads it. And I was like, at the end of that, I was like, sign me up what do i have to, do to help this guy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it was so motivated have you listened have you heard that like just the last chapter in itself is enough to like make you just get up and go running and like we gotta do this now you know yeah yeah. <laughs> so, yeah definitely 
so here's- you're talking about uh, the war on normal people, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That, that, that's the book also sold me. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. here's the cool part though, Ching, is I, after that, I signed up for a, a Yang Gang group that actually there was already an Atlanta Yang Gang started. And somebody called me and reached out to me and I asked them, I was like, I really want to go like stand on the corner of Freedom Parkway and Boulevard, which is this really busy intersection close to my apartment and just hold up Andrew Yang for president signs. Just in, <laughs> Yes, in hope that people just Google him. Cause I was uh-huh. thinking to myself, this guy has has had to have been made fun of and picked on and whatever for like, you're running for president. Like really you're running for president. And so I'm like, I don't care. People can, you know, make fun of me or think badly of me. This is, if it's something that helps the cause and the message, I'll do it. So they said, sure, we can send you some files and you can print them out and you can go hold up the signs. So I posted in the, the uh, Facebook group for Atlanta Yang Gang. I was like, does anybody want to come do this with me? And two crazy people <laughs> decided to come. They're not, <laughs> but you know, whatever. We had a blast and people, and then yeah. after that, oh, they told me, tweet it, like tweet about it, send us pictures. It was actually Carly Riley that I talked to. Oh and, yeah. Like, send us pictures and then. So I tweeted it and I sent them pictures and Andrew retweeted me and responded. And I had no idea that was going to happen. <laughs> what in the world? Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, anyway, that after that, like the rest was history. That was when? What What the date? February like the- of 2019. Wow. Wow. You're yeah. a really OG. <laughs> OG <Yeah>. young man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, and then after that, we did, I think we probably did. I kind of like ended up by default just kind of leading the Atlanta Yang Gang because the guy that had yeah. started the group was in school and really and had a baby. So he was like really didn't have as much time. But we ended up doing 45 different events between February and October here in the Atlanta area to get the word out about Andrew Yang. We did this really cool tailgate at an Atlanta United game, which is a soccer professional soccer team where we gave people free beer if they just Googled Andrew Yang on their phone. <laughs> they loved it. A brab. And what a brab. Looked, <laughs> yes, yes. There That's is footage funny. of this too. Uh, um, I think Hightower has footage of this. Yeah. So, um, hey, yeah, yeah. Von Doroma Do is here. Hi, hi, hi. hi. Hi, How are thanks. You? Yeah, yeah, thanks for being with us. So yeah. that's yeah, wonderful. Um, yeah. Now, <laughs> so you were you were really early February. Um, I only knew uh, Andrew Yen uh, starting May fourteenth, twenty nineteen, because he came to New York. Uh, he did a uh, a rally in the uh, Washington State Park. That's the first yeah. time I saw him. That's yeah. how you found out about him? Yeah. Somebody oh, wow. told me uh, to go. Uh, so I just went without knowing much mm-hmm. about Andrew yet. And yeah. I went. Um, I went. I still did not know much because, but I was so impressed because there's so many people. There was like, I don't know, 800,000 people at the park. Yeah. Right. I, you know, the park is not very big, you know. And, and then I started to interview people. It was a rainy day. Yes. Uh, after his speech, it was like he was all surrounded by a lot of people and reporters and stuff. So I couldn't really go on, you know, so to to talk to him. So mm-hmm. I started to just interviewing people I can grab, and there I learned so much about Andrew Yen. And yeah. so just one thing after, yeah. So I I would say after about a month later, I became a young guy. Yeah, after I read the book. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Listen, was, guys, yeah. if you haven't read the book, yeah, read the book. I read don't the book. Disappointed. Yes. Yeah. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Oh, uh, you so. can you can even find uh the audio version, I think, on YouTube. Like somebody mm-hmm. put it there for free. Uh, right. was it's Adrienne's voice reading it. And uh, I also bought the, the CD. So I have CD. I have I have a lot of books in my apartment also. So whoever, you know, wants to have a copy, I can give it to you. You know, I still have a, a quite a few uh, copies. So that's a, a nice. really amazing, amazing gift he, he gave to us. Now, uh, now fast forward. Um, so where did you go? I mean, uh, did you did you go anywhere like during his campaign? 
you you went to Iowa, or, yes. or did you? Yeah. Yes, I was in Iowa, New Hampshire, California, <laughs> I was in Vegas. I was everywhere. I Whoa. was when I started working with them was in October full time uh, on the advanced team, which I I don't think m many people who don't work in the political industry know what that means. It's basically yeah. event management and planning. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was such a cool opportunity. I also did some like body person type roles. We kind of shared that amongst the advanced team, um, which is just kind of being the right hand man for the candidate, um, making sure he has like, you know, pens and water and markers and managing the interactions with the, mm -hmm. you know, supporters and that kind of thing. So and then driving him as well, helping with making sure food. I mean, you'd you'd be amazed at how much um, thought and goes into just logistics, just logistics when you're moving around that much. Um, so logistics, uh, food for the team, food for Andrew, snacks for the team, snacks for Andrew, picking up cars, you know, uh, going and preparing the um, space, setting up the space for the event. How is it going to be laid out? Where's the banner going to be? How, what are these little, like those things in your background? The, um, yeah. yeah, I can't, yeah, the sign. People yeah, holding. the signs. I yeah. can't think of what they're rally signs. Where are yeah. they posted? And yeah. how are people going to enter? Where is the media going to sit or stand? Um, where are you going to have the interviews with Andrew afterwards? That's the kind of thing that we on the advanced team would plan uh, on site ahead of time. How is Andrew coming in? How is Andrew going out? You know, because of course he comes in in a different door or entry point than mm -hmm. everyone else. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot there to manage and it was just so much fun. Oh my gosh. I loved it. Yeah. So, so how, what was your experience before that? Like, how do you know how to do that kind of work in so much details? You know, I, that's a very good question. You know, the, the I think where we all realized that it would work for me is because shortly after I did that holding up the signs thing. <laughs> yeah. I was on the volunteer calls yeah. and they said that they wanted to start the touring doing, um, doing rallies yeah and so they said if you live in a local place and you're willing to help us we'd mm -hmm. love to have your help and so i said hey i'll help with you know doing a rally in atlanta well i i like just took the ball and ran with it and they gave me plenty of autonomy to yeah. do it and yeah. i basically you know planned like 90 percent of the of that rally and yeah. it was here at piedmont park in atlanta outdoor we had you know professional lighting and stages and we had food trucks we had you know alcohol there it was cool it was so much fun so i had the experience of doing it from that mm -hmm. also i you know my work in pr previously i worked in public relations actually in racing and so it's very similar to the work that i was doing in racing with managing the driver managing the scheduling you know, that kind of thing. So it really did tap into some skills that I had already had. Um, but once I did the the rally here in April of 2019, kind of planned that, I think they were super thankful, really could see the skill level there. And of course, were open to me becoming a part of the team at, you know, at whatever point in time. So that was how that ended up happening. And hey, like, it's a skill. Sometimes we have skills that we don't even know we have. You yeah. know what I'm mean? saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like sometimes it's common sense, right? And also uh, because it's kind of interrelated to whatever you were doing before. So you just sort of, uh, you know, tapped in to your common sense plus your ex past experience. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. So I think, yeah. I think the passion too had yeah. a lot to do with that helped a lot. You yeah. know, like I really wanted it to be a great experience for people. Why? Because I was passionate about Andrew. Right. See what I'm saying? And and I, I, you know, I think you would, could say accurately that about the rest of the team of mm -hmm. folks that I worked with on the advanced team. None of us were experienced, you know, events or advanced team people. We were all mm -hmm. just very passionate and willing to work together and work hard to get the job done because we really, really believed in the message. So I'm just curious. I, 
I, I follow Andrian, you know, for almost a year during 2020. And also for the New York City mayoral, I go whenever I can to shoot uh, uh, shoot some videos and film. Um, I was just wondering, like, can you like tell us a little bit about what Andrew Yen is is a side that we don't see? Because all I see is he's appearing, you know, on stage, mm -hmm. you know, being so charismatic. And yeah. uh, like, when does he prepare his shit? You know, and, and when do, does he go to sleep? I was like, yeah. he, he has to come so many things. Like, do you like? Do you yeah. have any of these like a secret? <laughs> yeah, no well, secret. I, I'm thinking of a couple of things. It's, yeah. You know, as you're speaking, one is like, when does he sleep? Um, I remember multiple times driving him and the team, and him, you know, napping in the car. I mean, the amount of events that guy did and was willing to do is insane. You know, like I think I read a stat somewhere that we did more events, like I double or triple the amount of events of any other presidential candidate in Iowa, you know? So this guy is just like willing to just go, 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 go. So definitely there were moments where he's like sleeping in the car and everybody's like giving him that space and time, you know? Um, I think he did a pretty good job of, of you know, resting in the times that he had to rest. Um, what was your other question? How like other how does he prepare? Like oh, like prepared. from one event to another. Like uh, like does does he read or does he watch uh, news or you know like like what does he do in between yeah. all well, the appearance? So here's there's a couple of things that I would say in my limited experience, you know, I've, I wasn't with them 24 seven, right. I yeah. was with them some though in the car yeah. between places, driving, what have you. So there's a couple ways I would answer that question. Number one, um, Andrew is brilliant. Like that mm -hmm. guy is a very, very, very intelligent man. And mm -hmm. so I think, you know, in reality, the extent of time and in energy that he has to invest to be able to keep up with the storylines and understand things is a, is a lot less maybe than some other people. So that's number one. Number two, I do recall that um, he was highly active on Twitter. We all, I think, know that. And of course, Twitter is an, a, a space for news. You know, it's a space to know what's going on and be informed. Uh, number three, I would say, and I know there might be people out here, out there that may not like what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it and <laughs> it's just going to have to be what it is. Zach Grauman. That's it. Zach Grauman. That guy was so, so important and so helpful. My observations in, in time spent with the team in the car was that Zach was so, so important and so much a part of helping shape the message, the messages, the messaging, um, bringing a real good balance to uh, Andrew's personality. I mean, we all need people outside of ourselves that can help us see things that we can't see, right? And Andrew was a such a humble person and so willing to receive that information and also ask for it. I mean, there were times we were in the car and there was strategy being discussed and I'm driving and he asked me, what do you think, Lacey? I'm thinking, <laughs> you really don't know what I think. Um, you know, so, so, yeah. but I think that speaks a lot to his character and his mm -hmm. humility, which is something we really could use a lot of, obviously, in politics. Um, so I think, and then from a preparation standpoint, I, I think that I just would speak back to, you know, Zach and also just his, just intelligence level and also like, the authenticity of his message. Like he didn't need to be prepped for all this stuff most of the time. Why? Because he's so passionate about it. It's in him. He knows the numbers. He knows the math. He knows that, you know, how basic income will affect things, you know? So yes, he had advisors there and people who could help him with topics that he wasn't, you know, uh, fully educated on or didn't know about because everybody has those. Um, but I think it's probably a combination of, of several of those things. And what I will say that's kind of fun is that 
-hmm. you know, it, it was so funny to watch him go from such a professional candidate to we get in the car and we just laugh and joke. Mm -hmm. And he was just such a real human being. And, you know, also he did a great job of affirming us as a team. So mm -hmm. he would say like, thanks, Lacey. You're, you're the best. You're awesome. I appreciate you doing this. You're doing a great job or whatever. Multiple times he said that to me mm -hmm. um, over the course of the time working with him and, and other people as well on the team. So um, just really all around mm -hmm. a class act guy. I mean, that's part of why I wrote uh, an article about him mm -hmm. on my blog. Um, mm -hmm. It's medium.com, lacydelane.medium.com. Yeah. When when that really negative article came out uh, about his presidential campaign, mm -hmm. I I was like, I, I I wrote in there. I was thinking like, I have to give my version of this story because I was there, you know. Mm -hmm. And the way I look at it is this: I wasn't in politics before. I'm not trying to be in politics. I'm not trying like to have some, you know, successful, super successful career in politics or any career in politics. Mm -hmm. I did that because I believed in this message in this man. And so yeah. if I would have gotten there and he would have been, you know, not what we all thought he was, I, I would have been, I would have just left. <laughs> I would not have worked my heart out uh, like I did. Ta -da! Did you, you see know. it? No. What is it? Oh yes! Oh. <laughs> I found this yes. earlier. So, yeah, that's a great so, run. Yes. Yeah, this, I, I'm really proud of this, and I, I mean, I remember all that happening, and I was like, you know what? I will feel really good to be able to say my part about uh -huh. my experience and how wonderful it was. Yeah, um, I, I felt so empowered to do my job. I was not micromanaged at all. At all, we all had so much work to do. We were such a small team compared to other teams, yeah. but we were just there to be there for each other, to help each other, support each other. It wasn't like, why didn't you do this? Blah blah blah. It was like, oh, okay, let's. How do we solve the problem? Yeah. And so, um, Zach, uh, Andrew, everybody was just awesome. Uh, I just, I had a really hard time when the campaign ended because I was like, man. These people yeah. became like my family, I love them. They love me, and yeah, it's over, you know. Yeah, I cannot imagine uh, how you deal with uh, this kind of a, you know, uh, when sort of a the whole camping ended. Where were you on uh, February eleventh? February is that when the um when the when the, the New ended? Hampshire he uh, suspended his uh, campaign? Yeah. Um, so I believe, uh, I can't remember if I was still in New Hampshire or if okay. I was home. Oh, okay. I got sick at the end of January. Oh. I'm, likely it was COVID, honestly. And I actually was wiped out. From you mean work. maybe it's COVID? I maybe? think it might have been very, very likely oh. that it was COVID. Okay, I see. Um, but I was literally wiped out. I was in a hotel room. Oh, for yeah. the last, you know, two weeks or whatever of the campaign. Yeah. And so I was, I, I had a heads up that this was yeah. happening, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was, that was tough. It was tough yeah. because, you know, it was something that I really strongly believed in, obviously his campaign, but also yeah. really felt like we would be there for a while. Right. You know? Right. So it was hard, really hard. I was um, I was in New Hampshire for the last two, uh, three weeks uh, of of his uh, up until the you know eleventh, and uh, I went to New Hampshire thinking I just just go there for a weekend. I drove there and then uh, met uh, Jack Chan, uh, okay. who facilitated uh, his house to a lot of young men. So cool. I stayed with him, mm -hmm. and. Uh, one thing after another, I decided I'm not, I'm not leaving. You know, so I stayed till February 11th. Wow. And yeah, yeah. So I basically um, uh, worked with them. Uh, I, I, I was mo mainly a driver. Uh -huh. I drive them, uh, and then they get out of the car to go canvassing. Uh 
you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes I, I go with them too. So uh, I, I even went once with myself. It was really scary just to knock on doors by myself because I usually do it with another person uh, yeah. in Iowa. Yeah. So yeah. it was, uh, it, it was, I was numb actually on, on yeah. February 11th because I did not know it was coming. Uh, yeah. I sort of, uh, I was in denial. Because I already should have known because I stay in the ho ho home of Jack's home because I can see some signals. For instance, some uh, camping worker has been already let go. Yeah. 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 But I kind of refuse to, to realize that, you know, I sort of like, so anyway, so it was pretty tough. Yeah. So to yeah, I, I, I knew earlier on, right. That it was happening in, <laughs> I remember being sick and then finding this out and just like feeling a little bit isolated too, because mm -hmm. it's like, I couldn't really talk to anybody about it, you know? Right. Right. Um, but I think what, what hit me the hardest is just that those first six months after the campaign ended was so hard because I had just gotten into this routine with these folks that, we just were all equally committed to what we were doing. And mm -hmm. it's like, they really did become a family. And so that was really hard for me to, to that loss, the loss yeah. of family, the loss also of something power, something that you're working towards with other people. I think that's very empowering and it does make us feel um, it's very, it brings a lot of purpose to our lives. Right. And, and I think right. that's something that's helpful for all of us as humans to feel like we're living a fulfilled life. Yeah, I just feel um, I, 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 it's not like, uh, yeah, it, it's really from the bottom of my heart. I feel I'm a little bit better person than before. I, I, I'm in this, you know, movement. So, yeah. And, and uh, yeah, so we talk so much about, about Angie and it's uh, mm -hmm. wonderful. Should we just watch a, a two minute trailer? You remember I made a short document. I made a, a, a feature documentary, 80 minutes long yes. film about Andrew. Have you ever seen it yet? I've or? watched part of it. I have not seen all of it. Okay. Okay. Should we, mm -hmm. should we sh see the, the, yes. the, the trailer a little bit? Okay. To, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So let me, uh, let me, so, I have a couple of different versions of the trailer, and this one is a, a little bit, this one is two minute, 30, 30 uh, second one version, okay? So, okay. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, maybe I should, I'm, I'm, I'll mute ourselves, okay? Just make sure we don't have noise. Uh, I just muted us, okay? So. This is a trailer for my young and diary. Right now it's circling around a little bit. I don't know what's going on. Hold on a second. It is, yeah. All right, so looks like, uh, sorry about that. Looks like, uh, look, it's circling around. Uh, so the internet, maybe it's a little too, uh, let me close some of the uh, things, okay? Okay. Well, it's not going anywhere, sorry. Hmm, okay. All right, that's okay. You guys can watch uh, this on your own, I guess. Um, check uh, Jewel Media. You just type in my Young and Diary trailer. You'll probably see two or three different versions. Uh, uh, right now, it's not coming up. So, sorry about that. Hold on one second. Uh, okay. Okay, well, I'll try my best. Never mind. <laughs> I, I maybe yeah for whatever reason it's just not coming out um so well, it's okay. tell me a little bit about how you got uh got to the point where you were like i'm making a documentary i'm obviously you're a filmmaker what 
what what was the point where you go i gotta do a film about this <laughs> thank you well uh i at the very beginning like i said i uh, the first event I went was a May 14th uh, in Washington State Park, Washington mm -hmm. Square Park in New York City. It's because mm -hmm. a friend of mine said she's coming and she introduced me to go uh, visit Andrew Yen. So I did uh, without knowing much about who Andrew Yen was, yeah. but I I love making uh, videos. So I started uh, just already made a video that day, I was just, I got there three hours earlier than mm -hmm. the event time. I got there four o'clock, you know, the event starts seven. So yeah. uh, I was totally uh, into making a video. And then later on, uh, people would just ask me to join more of the camping, uh, like um, uh, phone banking uh, or fundraising. And so it just, I start to go to all of these events at the beginning uh, just because Yang Gang wants me to go to video, mm -hmm. okay, as a videographer. Uh, but then until I read his book in uh, in June, uh, June 4th, it's a, it's a fundraising in Princeton, um, Princeton Club. It was a very intimate also. I get to see Andrew Yang in person in a very close, close yeah. distance uh, took pictures and asked questions i asked questions during the q a so yeah. that brings a different different level of uh, sort of a more intimate uh knowing him right. so so i think of what i did was i just kept documenting every time i go out i did not think i was making a a, a long documentary. I just want to make short videos. So I put it on uh, YouTube, my YouTube channel, this channel, Drew Media. Yeah. And amazingly, I guess so many people liking to watch it. They just yeah. keep watching it and uh, my subscription gets bigger and bigger. Wow. So yeah, that also kind of is a, a motivation for me to make more videos. Yeah. Because I have my audience, you know. Right. Uh, it was very organic because I didn't even make people to watch. I just throw there and people start to watch. So, right. Yeah. That's the best when it's organic yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 So I didn't do any development, you know, I did not ask people to. So that's how. So then I, uh, I was just getting sucked in, you know, more and more. And then eventually I went to Iowa to join the Yen Week. Yeah. There, there, it was very powerful experience. I had I met so many young men, uh, so many young men from different parts of uh, country. They're yeah. so selflessness. Uh, they're so selfless. They're so articulated. Mm -hmm. They're just like so crazy about Andrian. And so I was like, oh my god, you know. So I started to interview them. I interviewed probably forty people in uh iowa uh, i set them down in in the hotel we're staying we're staying in a graduation hotel and yeah. so the whole experience was almost like a you know college you know uh slash conference slash you know revolutionary movement you know yes. <laughs> a lot of rallies like it, didn't it? <laughs> yeah there's a lot join a lot of rallies you know in the cold weather you know three degrees or seven degrees oh. yeah yes. so anyway so 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 um yeah uh iowa was incredible and then new hampshire three weeks so after mm -hmm. the whole thing so when andrew yen uh suspended his thing mm -hmm. his his campaign i i was numbed you know i didn't know what to think and yeah sort of, yeah it was uh, it was it, it was difficult it was difficult yeah so and then pandemic came in march right we're all mm -hmm. locked up so yeah. i was like okay what what else better thing I, I should do, you know? So I start to view 200 hours of footage. Wow. I, I shot everything on iPhone 11. Wow. <laughs> I know you yeah. have a clubhouse room about that. Now I understand that a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I teach people on Clubhouse how to make film on iPhone 11, you know. So cool. Yeah. yeah. So 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 that's how the film uh, slowly, it took me altogether about seven months to do the editing, you know. That's a long time. Yeah. 
<laughs> so January of this year, um, the film was uh, uh, was shown in the public uh, uh, in in YouTube for a while, and then started to go into the film festival circuit. So uh, we the film got into eight film festivals mm -hmm. and won three best documentary feature film in three different countries. What? Yes. Yes, you did not know. That's awesome. Yeah. We we won. I always say we. I guess I don't feel like it's my film. We won best documentary feature at the Toronto Documentary Film Festival. That is amazing. <laughs> you know what? Though I will tell you that you're like wow. You didn't know. I will say that part of what was what I needed to just get through the pain mm -hmm. <laughs> of it all ending the way it did yeah. was I had to detach a little bit from yeah, Yang Yang. Yeah. And so that's part of why I don't, I don't even know, you know? Oh, okay. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but that's, that's okay. so awesome. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. And we oh, won God. in January this year, we won the best documentary feature in Rome International Film Festival. And then the great thing about it is that people can sh see this video, uh, Toronto Film Festival, right? Yeah. They, they made a video for us. For 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 us, they uh -huh. made a video with the opening of two minute of uh, of the trailer. Right, they had eight eight audience talk about the film. They talk about they never knew who Andrew was. Now they knew. They wow. loved his idea. So they all talk men, women, older, young. That video is really powerful because wow. it's. Canadian talk about American election who does not know Andrew Yan much now they know so right. that yeah and they talk about UBI as well so it's wow really, really amazing so yeah. cool I mean yeah. you know I think it is so amazing to think about what has happened to all of us mm -hmm. um, as a result of Andrew Yang deciding to run for president yeah I mean, think about the things the people um that you know, you've met or, and the things that you've done for me, the things, the people that I've met, the things that I've done. Right. I mean, there's so many, like starting a podcast, like right. the free tail, free beer tailgate here in Atlanta, you know, for people, <laughs> people Andrew Yang, like I was <laughs> with Andrew at Jimmy Kimmel Live. Yeah. Like, there's some experiences and I have friends that I will have for a long, long time, yeah. you know, yeah. because of this. So yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to show people a little bit of your um, website. Yeah. This is uh, uh, Rethinking Humanity podcast yeah. website. So yeah. do you have a fixed time people can follow you or you do you like, like say every week or every month, a certain time you do the podcast? We, we have been doing the podcast on Friday afternoons, either at one or three o'clock. Oh, okay. okay. Victor is in a bit of a transition um, because he just is going to start a new job starting mm. this week. Okay. Um, so, and it, you know, as you imagine, life is picking up for all of us. Things are yeah. different post pandemic. Right. Right. So um, we're in the process of figuring out what our new time slot will be, but we're a weekly podcast and it's been mm -hmm. a Friday weekly thing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. It's, this part is like all of the shout outs that we've gotten mm. um, from on Twitter. We had okay. Sherry Turkle, who is an MIT professor. She started a whole department um, of research at MIT on, you know, technology and how it affects uh, human relationships. Mm. We had her on. She's amazing. I, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the Social Dilemma documentary. Yeah, a lot great. of the themes from that she did a lot of research on great 20 film. years ago. And mm -hmm. so she's written about it in her books. And so we love her. Um, we also had Amelia Pang on for our interviews. Um, she also, she wrote a book called Made in China, an SOS letter, uh, a prisoner, an SOS letter and uh, the cost of America's cheap goods. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically how our consumption patterns are really affecting people and everywhere mm. and really are harmful. And that really fits really well in with from ta who talks about sane consumption and us needing to come to a place where we consume, basically consume less uh, in a more sane manner. But right now we consume at such a high level that we're, we're hurting people, including ourselves in the process. 
Right. So Definitely. we do interviews. Interviews aren't the main part of our podcast. Our uh -huh. main, the main part of our podcast is a discussion around these topics. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, but we do interviews sometimes when we find folks who are kind of like, on our same, you know, doing things, talking about things, whatever, on our same, right? Uh, you know, right, thing right. or whatever. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had also a guy uh, that actually worked on the campaign as well, Tom Crumans, Crumans, mm -hmm. excuse me. Mm -hmm. He uh, talks about his experience at the Boy Scouts. You don't know, I don't know if you know about that, but that was a um, huge bankruptcy for all of the sexual abuse trial uh, cases that were filed against them. Oh. So that's the thing we've seen. It's so systemic, the sexual abuse. We're huge advocates for mental health. That's a big part of um, kind of our message and, you know, what we discuss and, and, and how society plays a role in that too. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, I tried, I tried to like uh, look for, uh, uh sonia on twitter and i couldn't find her so so i didn't tweet her i was gonna tweet our event to her you know so yeah. can you just uh very uh, briefly tell us a little bit about her sure yeah sonia is uh, a friend of mine that i met a good two or three years ago maybe two at a philosophy meetup group here in atlanta mm -hmm. and we became friends and um, have been friends all this time. And she um, and I both, you know, liked Andrew when he was running. And she, of course, knew of me working with him, volunteering for him, whatever. But she and I are just, we would get together and we would have conversations that are similar to what you hear if you listen to the podcast. And I joked one time and I was like, we just need to start a podcast because I think mm -hmm. these conversations are pretty interesting, you know, mm -hmm. um, but we just have a similar passion for um, seeing society be mm -hmm. able to be presented in a different way for people mm -hmm. so that they can, you know, really like self-actualize um, and really like be able to feel their feelings fully process things. I mean, a lot of the reason why I feel like we see so much difficulty and uh, mental and emotional distress is because we don't give ourselves enough time and space mm -hmm. to process our emotions, to understand ourselves. Right. And as a society, there's, you know, it's only the rich people who have time to do that. It's only mm -hmm. the rich people who can go to the gym. It's only the rich people, rich, who can, you know, uh, eat healthy. You see what I'm saying? And so- yeah. There's a lot, it's one of the reasons we love uh, basic income ideas so much, but all that to say, um, I said to her, Hey, you know, like I, when Victor told me, let's, you know, I'll do your techno technical stuff. Mm -hmm. If you want to do, start a podcast, I said, Hey, Sonia, you want to do a podcast at, and mm -hmm. talk about, you know, how we can do life differently. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like we can use from and other things as our, you know, jumping off point and, she was like, yeah, let's do it. So mm -hmm. she's just a great friend, really intelligent person, avid reader, um, someone that I get along really, really well with. And you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, there, you guys have a really good chemistry together. I can see that. It's like, a, you know, like a uh, kind of taking and giving, yin and yang, that kind of sense. You're a very good match. Yes, it's amazing. I've heard other people say that. And, I don't know. I, I, I'm amazed by her. Like sometimes I'm just like, man, <laughs> what you're saying is so good, but yes, yeah, kind of more, I don't know, maybe, um, she's less animated than I am for sure. Uh, I'm super uh, animated and high <laughs> and, you know, want to make people laugh and <laughs> she's like this even keel. Yeah. Yeah. It's have really you considered, cool. have you considered to be a comedian? I have thought about that, that I've wanted to do improv. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can see that. Yeah. I, yeah, you should I, try. <laughs> that's cool. I, 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 I want to. I'll have to, like, really actually do that. I, yeah. My brother actually does stand-up comedy. Oh, really? Uh, you know, he's done he's done several, like, pretty good gigs. But uh, it's in the family, I think. It's in oh. the blood a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So... Uh, <clears throat> I'm really curious now. I wanted to try one more time just to see if this uh, will go okay at all. 
Sorry. I really want to see this. Yay! A closing statement that was perfectly crafted, got to his main stop, and told you why he's different and why that's good and why it goes to the question of electability. Andrew, yeah. I am that candidate. I can build a much broader coalition to beat Donald Trump. It is not left. It is not right. It is forward. And that is where I'll take the country in 2020. Mm. Money. UBI is freedom. Who's American? Who wants a thousand dollars a month? Are you a registered Democrat, though? Yes. Show me what democracy looks. I'm sorry. No. I just, sorry. No. I, I just clicked that. Once I start reading, I couldn't put the book down. And everything he said in there makes complete sense. Sometimes this world is changing too fast. I can never find a moment that seems it's gonna last. Hey. Universal basic income, one thousand dollars a month, is something that's going to ultimately be necessary before long. I am trying to stay in Iowa for as long as Yang needs me. It's a little scary, but I can't wait to be here. Every door I knock on, I think about getting Yang to third, second, or first. That is Israel. He keeps walking to another house to knock on doors to spread the word of Andrew Yang. Intense. Yeah. Woman is like, you can get off my fucking property. You have no right being on my fucking property. You Chinese people go back to fucking China. All three of us have different candidates we're looking to support. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, Andrew Yang is not one of them. We want Yang! Tomorrow is a big day. Primaries in New Russell. Hampshire. Russell. We're going to see if we can actually pick up some people, take them to the polls. You Andrew Yang. I am a little heartbroken. Back. Oh, it's high town. If I had a thousand dollars, it's about time. Wow. Yeah. So many memories. Yeah. This wow. is amazing. Amazing. <coughs> Excuse me. I wanted to tell you yeah. that first clip of Andrew at the debate reminded yeah. me. Um, one of the other things that was really cool that I got to do, many, I think folks will know this about me. I don't really talk about it a lot. It doesn't come to the top of my mind, but I was in Detroit for that debate. Uh, and there was someone screaming in the audience every time he said something awesome. Mm -hmm. And that was me. That was mm -hmm. me and Tyreen. Uh, mm. scene. <clears throat> and uh, I remember making a tweet about it after it happened and then Andrew retweeting it and um, later on that day and then all these people were like, oh my gosh, we heard you on TV. You were like, you know, the, per the best cheerleader for all of us. You were like representing <laughs> all of us. And I was like, whoa, I didn't know that. I was that loud. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I remember actually. Yeah. There's some loud voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I remember that was you. <laughs> that was me. Yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah, wow, it's amazing. So amazing. he killed that man. Yeah. That. yeah, And I will tell you, from what I understand, uh, a lot of that speech was shaped and molded by Zach. Zach was such an important part of the campaign, and and if you think about it, like guys. Two, two people, you know, Andrew and Zach, and really Carly had a lot to do with it as well. But there's this teeny tiny team of people that thrust Andrew to this place where he becomes, after his run, this high, widely known, highly respected guy. That is the ultimate underdog story. Who runs for president as a nobody and comes out as everybody's favorite guy? Right. Like that is an incredible feat. It's incredible. And I'm so proud to have been a part of it in some way, because I know that, you know, the things that we were all hoping for and working towards are going to be things that would help other people. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I yeah. do you know anything about anybody is making a film 
about what you just said because I didn't follow, I did not follow Andrea and I follow Yangan. It would be nice to see some of uh, the the things you were just mentioned, huh? The behind the scene stuff, um, personal stuff, you know, not like, a, you know, mm -hmm. we don't really need to know all the, you know, bullshit, you know, so, but right. personal stuff. Um, some, do you know, is someone like following Andrew Yan and making film? I know High Tal does a lot. Did a lot. High Tal got a lot of footage, and from yeah. what I understand, yes, there's some. There's a film that he's working on that okay. will likely include that, okay. um, or be about that. But I don't know a whole lot of details. But yeah. I do know he has a lot of footage. Yeah. Of just you know, like inside footage. Yeah. You yes. know, so, so pretty pretty cool. Yeah. So so tell me the truth. Um, how did you feel when Andrew Yen decided to run New York mayor, New York City mayor? I felt really positive about it. Really, really positive about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, now we know uh, not that many people voted for him. Right. No. So in this uh, in this uh, New York City situation, we don't want to talk about him too much. But just c can you give me some kind of a hope? Like, mm -hmm. what do you think he might he he will do? Uh, yeah. So in the future, that's this is a tough one. Um, I will say that I know that I need to plug my computer in. So in a second, I'm going to do that. Oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, I might grab my plug right now, but what oh. I will say is I don't know what he's going to do next. I think that for a lot of people, it would make sense if they said, hey, I need a break from politics right now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't see him doing that mm -hmm. because I just don't think that that's what he ultimately wants to do. I think he really, really wants to make a difference in yeah. politics and yeah. so i've i'm you know you can ask anybody on the team that i worked with i'm like the ultimate like it's going to be okay there's a silver lining there's something positive in this and it's going to work out person in any situation and i try to do that in my own personal life as well but i think what we're going to find you know it's going to take some time obviously cuz this was disappointing and not what anybody expected right but i think we will see uh, the good in it as time goes by. Um, I think that there's a good likelihood that he runs for president again, which he probably wouldn't have done if he won mayor. So that's cool. And I also think that regardless of whether this guy is in a political position or not, he is going to be helping people and making an impact. And this just goes without saying. And arguably, he might be able to do it more, not in a political position, than in a political position. So I don't think like, you know, it's the end of the world, like Andrew Yang's done. Like a lot of people said, well, if he doesn't win, it's going to be horrible and blah, blah. No, it's not. It's not like that. Um, mm. I think it was obviously disappointing and definitely unexpected. Uh, but I definitely see that there is good that will come out of it and it might take some time and that's okay. Uh, but the number one thing I hope he does right now is just him and Evelyn Please, you know, I, I hope they're resting because mm -hmm. they have been going hard for several, <laughs> several years now. Yes. And I'm like, yeah. I just love so them too much. much. Work. Like, yeah. I want them to just rest, you know, right. a little right. bit because right. that's important part of being able to do a good job at whatever it is that you're doing, you know? Right. Yeah. Okay. I got to well grab said. my little charger here. Hang on oh, a second. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. you can grab. You can grab. Uh, I wanted to use this time to thank uh, our audience to be with us, and thank you so much. Um, I am Ching Zhu. I do this uh, uh, interview, uh, interview or a conversation with someone special once a week since last March. Uh, March twenty seventh was my first episode. Today uh, with uh, Lacey, this is episode number one hundred fourteen. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, and today wow. is unusual. It's, we do a Monday. Uh, some sometimes, and most of the time, I do on Wednesday. So this will, coming Wednesday, I will talk with the composer. Uh, uh, composer. Yeah. Next Wednesday, I will talk to a math uh, movement uh, member. 
um, cool. also who came all the way from Seattle to uh, support Andrew Yan's mayoral uh, race. So I met him in Manhattan. So yeah. and please, um, please subscribe if you like this uh, uh, talk. Please subscribe my channel, Jewel Media. Also, please subscribe uh, Lacey's uh, uh, YouTube channel, Rethinking yep. Rethinking Humanity. Yep. 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 So uh we are going to wrap up now. Before we wrap up, uh, you have anything else you want to shout out, Lacey? You know, I just want to shout out to first of all, because we talked a lot about Andrew and Evelyn, to them, but they're just amazing, beautiful people, and I'm so thankful for them um and the relationship that I've gotten to have with them. I also want to shout out to um Victor because I wouldn't be here again without him. And of course, Sonia as well. But I want to uh, invite all of you to follow us um, on here on Twitter. I'm sorry, here on YouTube. <laughs> Rethinking Humanity podcast, if you just uh, search it. We don't have a backslash yet because we, we're, we're wanting to get to that many followers. We're not there yet. But I'm at Lacey Delane on Twitter and on Instagram. And we're in, on Clubhouse as well. We have a club, Rethinking Humanity Club on Clubhouse. So come and join us uh, for for that club. And um, we're going to be a little bit more active with that um, coming up. So, and check out our website, of course, rethinkinghumanity.us. And so much thanks to you, Ching, for what you've done, um, you know, today with me, and I appreciate you having me, but also your uh, documentary about the Yang Gang and your support of Andrew Yang means so much to me and I appreciate that as well. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Oh, uh, all right. So we're gonna do a rapid fire before okay. we go. Let's, let's do rapid it. Fire. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> if I die. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. What's your favorite color? Purple. Uh what is your favorite food genre? What kind of food you like? Oh, like Mexican. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh probably like Chinese uh, hibachi. It's hibachi. Yes. Hibachi. Oh, I love hibachi. <laughs> yeah, we have a hibachi right next to where I live. So when you come, we'll, we'll go. Uh, yeah. Which uh, which book uh, or books you read recently? I'm gonna show you one. Uh, the Sane Society. That's the one that we're talking about um, okay. right now. And then I would also mm. recommend this one. It's a new one. I just got brain spotting. It's about uh, working through trauma. It's a new um, therapy that's used for healing trauma. Uh, I see. I see. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wonderful. So yeah. uh, what is your um, favorite three electronic gadget? Hmm. This is a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> you have more than three. <laughs> no, I, I have to think hard to think about oh. three electronic gadgets. <laughs> I'm still not a technology person. Oh, really? Um, okay, so I, I guess number one has to be my phone because I really need that. Um, I have a Mac computer that I really like. Um, and then I guess the third one would be Fire Stick. I like my Fire Stick TV. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, when I know you are an exercise person. You always say, I'm in the gym, I'm in the gym. So yes. when you <laughs> exercise, do you listen to music? What music do you listen to? Hell yes. I listen <laughs> to like Nelly, uh, like 90s, early 2000s rap. I listen to Sia. Um, I listen to pop. Uh, let's see. What's the girl's name? Uh, oh, shoot. I can't think right now. But I have a, <laughs> I have a whole workout list. I have to Great. have my music. Yes. Yeah. Great. So, yeah. by the way, in, in uh, speaking of workout, like, what do you do? Like, do you do a whole series of things, or you just do? What do you do? I love it. I do uh, weightlifting, high intensity interval training, and kickboxing, um, separately, obviously. And then I play soccer, and I have a bike, and I live in the old Fourth Ward neighborhood, so it's easy to bike around. It's easy for me to walk everywhere. I actually was. Uh, walk to where I was going to uh, record with you earlier, but I ended up having, I couldn't walk back because it was raining. <laughs> so anyways, oh, but yes, it's a very walkable neighborhood. So as much oh. as I can be active, I love it. it. I feel really good. It just makes me feel good. You know, it's fun. Great, yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Do you play a musical instrument? No instrument. 
If you want to learn one, which one you want to learn? Piano. Very good. Um, can you, uh, do you, do you ever listen to classical music? Sometimes. Like, wait, do you have one classical music composer you can name? You can, you, you like? <sighs> I'll give you a hint. Mozart, Beethoven, Bach. Yeah, I was gonna say Bach, but I mean, that's, it's not like I listen to it enough to be like, that's my guy. Now I will tell you when, when I read, I listen to Oscar Peterson. He's oh. a piano jazz guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Jazz yeah. Girl. That's good. Yeah, I like that person. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So social media, you do a lot. Like how, what are the uh, number one social media thing you like to do? I'm more of an Instagram person post campaign before and during the campaign. I was mm -hmm. a Twitter person. Mm -hmm. I do not touch Facebook. Not uh, unless I have no? to. No? I yeah. tried to Facebook you. I couldn't find you. That's why. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never on there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, all right. Uh, pick three person uh, you want to have lunch with. Who are they? Definitely Eric Fromm. He's dead, but I would love to have lunch with Eric Fromm. Who's the Eric Fromm? <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. It's the guy we talk about on our podcast. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Three people that I want to have lunch with. Um... I would like to have lunch with some folks who are high up in the like humanistic psychology field. I can't think of anyone because I, I don't know, but I would love, to, I love those kind of conversations, um, you know, that are about that. So someone, someone who's studying psychology, sociology, um, let's see someone else. Uh, doesn't matter if they're dead or alive. doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Um, Hmm. There is, let's see. Oh, Sherry Turkle. I would love to have lunch with Sherry Turkle. Oh my gosh. She uh, is someone we've had on the podcast and she's wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. So um, if you have free time for two months, you can go to a city just to be a tourist mm -hmm. uh, in a country you've never been. Um, do you, which country, which city you would like to explore? That is a, it's, it's a tie between Costa Rica and uh, Barcelona, Spain. I think Barcelona, Spain would win because I would have access to all the other European countries and I've never been to Europe, but I love to travel internationally. And so, yes, this is a, I love this question. <laughs> Barcelona is great. I have never been there yet. I've been, yeah, uh, but yeah, Costa Rica, I have been twice. Oh, yeah? So, yeah beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. beautiful. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, last question coffee mm -hmm. or tea? Tea lately. Oh, uh, yeah? Yes. I am trying to get away from drinking as much coffee, so I'm doing tea. What kind mm -hmm. of tea? I like green tea. Uh, I like o oolong. I think oolong. oolong tea is how you say it. It's very healthy. Yeah. Yeah. I think the oolong, oolong is kind of a little dark, though, right? Yes. Oolong, oolong, yeah. It's a yeah. little bitter, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. 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 Whoa. So thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Yeah. 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 Thanks for talking with me. And uh, thank you for, for uh, all your great work you've been doing and you continue doing. And thank you. You are many people, including me. You're, you are our inspiration. Thank so, you. Yeah. So keep the great work and I'll see you soon. I hope. Yes, I hope so. I'm gonna have to get back up to New York city for sure. I loved it. It was fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. So when you come here, you know, we'll definitely hang out. Yeah. Yes. Last time it yes. was too hurried. Yeah. So yes. Yes. Yeah. Around campaign stuff. Hurried yeah. is, the good, is a good word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, great. So thank you guys uh, for being with us. Um, we have an audience here and then thank you. So uh, until next time and keep still, you know, be careful and keep safe, right? Yes, yes. The, 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 the thing is not over yet, you know, right? No, far from it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. Say hello to uh, your partner. Uh, wait, what's her name? Sonia, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and say hello to... Uh, Victor, he's been a very helpful to me also in, in my clubhouse. He always yeah. helps me. Yeah. He's awesome. I yeah. love him. Yeah. So, okay, dear. 
All righty. Thank All you right. for having me. This was great. I really appreciate it. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Me too. Thank you so much for being with us. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, have a great night, great afternoon, great morning, whenever you are. Yeah. Okay.